surrounded by the beautiful Rocky Mountains, it's time to jump into winter. Hi, I'm Brenda Buglione, and we've got a great show lined up for you this week. We met up with Vail, Colorado local Ryan Sutter. He chats with us about his family and having fun in Colorado. We'll also take a look back on some Warren Miller films. All that and a whole lot more is on the way. Stay tuned, you're watching Snow Motion. Would it be easier if we had no shoes, no time to kill, and nothing to lose, and no worries but the great blue sky? And looking for shade when the sun gets high, we're climbing up that coconut tree. If it's time for one of nature's treats, would it be easy? Being 40 feet above the half pipe is insane. You see the crowd, you see the ground, you see the trees, flipping, twisting, somehow land on your feet. It's really the best feeling in the world. Some people say my style is effortless, but you know, it's kind of my dirty secret that it really isn't. How are you gonna take it from being good to being great? You have to train harder and go bigger. It's extra time on the slopes, falling, getting up and doing it again. It's the way I ski, the way I choose to express myself, and the way I live my life. What we've done at Surefoot is really changed the way that you get ski boots. The sun shines bright. This boot is made for your foot. As the difference is amazing. You'll the ski light. better, they're better fitting, better skiing than anything you've ever experienced. I woke up feeling great, today was made for me. And life is good the way it should. No Motion is brought to you by The New Mitch by Paul Mitchell. Style isn't born, it's groomed. And by Surefoot. Better fitting, better skiing. Every little kid wants to grow up to be a firefighter. This guy is. He's a lieutenant right here in Vail and was on a little show called The Bachelorette. We rode up Gondola One with Ryan Sutter. For this week's chairlift ride, we got to take the gondola with Ryan Sutter, a lieutenant in the Vail Fire Department, and you might know him from The Bachelorette. Ryan, tell me what you're doing with your life right now. Well, you, you got the, the Vail Fire Department thing there. I've been doing that for 12 years. I also have two lovely little kids now that are, are three and five. They're both actually in um, Beaver Creek Ski School, which they love. You know, Vail and Beaver Creek Ski instructors are, I think, the best, and so, Every time they get, get done with those classes, they're all worn out and had a great time. It's fun to see that. My wife, Trista, is writing a book, so I'm sort of trying to be supportive of that, and that, that puts me in the sort of, what is it, um, daddy daycare role a lot. So I spend a lot of time with the kids, and of course, um, as much time as I can out in the wilderness up on the mountain. And how many days a week are you a firefighter? We have a, a sort of an interesting schedule where we work two days in a row, so 48 hours straight, and we follow that with four days off which is great. So it's like a six day week, um, but four of those days are off. And so I get to be home with the kids and, and my wife and we get to have a lot of fun. Before you were on The Bachelorette, you were a football player. I didn't know that. Yeah, I, you know, ever since I was this big, I always wanted to play football in the NFL. And so I played, you know, growing up and played at CU um, and was drafted into the NFL. And I, th I think I have the shortest NFL career on record. One play, I ran down the field on a kickoff and blew out my shoulder, and it, then that was sort of the end of my career. So um, I made it there, but it didn't last for very long. Yeah, but then now you are a triathlete? Yeah, I've done a couple of Ironmans, and I've done a whole bunch of other shorter triathlons in um, the Trans Rockies run, Leadville. I, I enjoy these, I enjoy challenging myself physically. I feel like I grow a lot as a person. No, I'm not just physically, but emotionally, well, mentally, because you, you know, in those longer races, you reach this point where you have to kind of summon um, 
an inner strength, uh, which I think is cool and it helps you grow as a person. And so I, I continually look for these new adventures and challenges. And tell me about uh, being a firefighter. Do you feel the same that you're being pushed that way? Certainly from time to time, there are those challenging kinds of calls as a firefighter, the calls that everybody I think thinks of when they think of firefighters. And those are fun and those are the, truthfully the easy ones because those are what you prepare for and what you're trained for. But what, what I've sort of found as a side benefit of the job is this opportunity to have an impact on people's lives on the smaller calls or maybe not even a call, just maybe we're at the coffee shop and a little kid walks in and wants to see the fire truck or something. Those, those have turned out, you know, I've, I've been in the career for long enough that people have come back and said, you know, six years ago you took me through the fire truck and I really had a great time. It left a real, a real impact on my life. And what I've kind of tried to instill in in my leadership on the fire department is to try and tell the younger guys that, you know, pay attention to these little opportunities because it's not always going to be, you know, breaking somebody out of a crashed up car or like pulling someone out of a burning building. You can make a really huge impact on these smaller calls too. And it's more of an exponential impact. You sort of, you maybe are just growing it, but over time it continues to grow. And it, you know, it helps make the world a better place. And I think in that's sort of the point, right? Were you a firefighter before you went on that show? Or did you live in Vail? Where I did, yeah. I moved to Vail in um, 2000. And I went on The Bachelorette in 2003 for a year. I actually waited tables at the Red Lion, sort of did the whole thing that you do when you first move to Vail. I came here just to sort of check it out and, and loved it and have, have kind of found a way to, to make it my life. You know, Were you a boarder, a skier before you, you came here? Um, well, I'm, I'm old enough to, to have started before there was snowboarding, so I skied and then I switched over to boarding and then a couple years ago I went back to skiing. When my kids were old enough to ski, it just became easier to ski with them. And um, I actually really enjoy both now. I think, you know, some days I prefer to be on skis, some days I prefer to be on a board. I kind of enjoy the, the variety. Is mom, or Trista, a, a skier? No, she doesn't Where really she like from? either of them. She's from St. Louis. She's a, like, this is the crazy part, is she's a warm weather person. She she lived in Miami for seven years and like she loves that climate. And I don't complain too much about her not being a skier because, I mean, you probably know that then there'd be a powder day and who gets to go, yeah. you know? Like, I, I get to go every single time now, so it's, it works out pretty well. Yeah, I, I'm not, I don't have many complaints about my life. You found your girl, you brought her here. I think yeah. he has it all. And now I've gotten to, to meet you, Brenda, and ride up on the gondola with you. I mean, I don't know where it goes from here, downhill, yeah, I, I suppose, yeah. I, I would think so. <laughs> so let's go take a run. Let's do it. The border and the skier, here we go. Uh-oh, don't run me off the hill. Stay tuned to Snow Motion. After the break, we're going to introduce you to one of the most successful alpine ski racers in the world. Don't go anywhere, you're watching Snow Motion. Valley and Alpine Meadows have combined to offer 6,000 acres, 43 lifts and 10 terrain parks in one amazing winter setting. Stay in the village at Squaw Valley just steps from the lifts and enjoy all that the North Lake Tahoe region has to offer. Squaw Valley and Alpine Meadows, plan your extraordinary winter adventure. Being 40 feet above the half pipe is insane. You see the crowd, you see the ground, you see the trees, flipping, twisting, somehow land on your feet. It's really the best feeling in the world. Some people say my style is effortless, but you know, it's kind of my dirty secret that it really isn't. How are you gonna take it from being good to being great? You have to train harder and go bigger. It's extra time on the slopes, falling, getting up and doing it again. It's the way I ski, the way I choose to express myself, and the way I live my life.
Welcome back to Snow Motion. Thanks for staying with us. When it comes to capturing the most amazing skiing in the world, no one does it better than the crew at Warren Miller Entertainment. Here's a look at what they do. I've been coming to Tahoe from the Bay Area since I was four years old. And one thing never ceases to amaze me. I just think it's incredible I could be sitting here in this situation when really I skied all morning. I think it's the same reason why when you live by the ocean, you can't not be by the ocean. The same thing with skiing by the lake. It just gives you this sort of energy. The same reason the uh, Washoe Indians found this sort of power from the beauty of the lake. It really doesn't get any better than this. The most amazing thing about this place isn't the lake. It's the skiers. Something about Tahoe just attracts the good, the crazy, and the crazy good. Lake Tahoe is surrounded by some great ski resorts. On the south side, we got Heavenly, and Kirkwood, and Sierra. And as you move around the lake to the east, you got Mount Rose, and further north is North Star, and Squaw Valley, Alpine Meadows. I've lived here all my life. There's so many different places to go, so many cool features. If you're brave enough, you can pretty much do everything here. Jamie Burge is one of the best female big mountain skiers in all of Tahoe. But around here, things are pretty much gender neutral. It's more about who can keep up. Not many keep up with Burge. One of the things I love about skiing in Lake Tahoe is that our powder piles up so quickly, it's just bottomless. Having a little uh, cold air mask going down from Alaska, Canada to give us some nice light snow to start with. Makes for some heart thumping runs. Let's go! Darren Rawls is known the world over as the most decorated speed skier in U.S. team history. And he still sees gates wherever he goes. It's always more fun to go fast, putting it all together, one nice big line, immersing yourself in that whole situation and go out there and, and doing it, making it happen. And uh, you get to be ready to make quick reactions. retired from the World Cup a few years back, and it's really slowed him down. World Cup skiers are the best in the world, and he is showing it. He just goes fast, and <laughs> he's not afraid. He just doesn't stop. And he, oh, he's just like, it's beautiful. He's one of the most successful alpine ski racers in the world. What is Bodie Miller like when he's not on a race hill? Cue up that athlete profile. The, the off season has been definitely interesting. I mean, I have a lot of interesting off seasons, but this one um, got engaged and married um, pretty quickly. We're really excited about that. It's been um, a really fun summer just watching Morgan play, and it's been great to watch you know watch her get used to the boat and um, and you know grow into it because it is a little bit of a, a challenge. This last year in Sochi in Russia, I hit a few holes 
really hard um, in the downhill training run, the second training run there. Busted off a big piece of the lateral femoral condyle, which is the sort of the back outside part of your, of your bone cartilage on your knee. I had the surgeries, the microfracture, and the surgery went really well. It's just a really long, slow recovery. Um, it takes, like it seems like, between 12 and, and 18 months. Um, right now I'm at about six and a half months, seven months. So to start seeing now is, is probably um, premature. Right now it's a fairly, not new procedure, but they just don't have a lot of information on exactly how the rehab should go and you really have to rely on your own instinct and, and feeling to make sure you don't make a mistake there. I'm pretty determined now to have this next Olympics be my last Olympics. It'd be silly to, to wreck that chance for lack of patience. There just isn't really much reason to take risk right now with it and if I if I give my knee a good chance to, to heal, it should be very close to 100%, which it hasn't been since 2001. We have a, a chance to really try to finish on a super high note on that Olympic season where I you know, really focus and, and draw things together and try to, try to put together a real, you know, real legendary season. Stay tuned. When we come back, we're going to take another look at some amazing skiing from Warren Miller. You're watching Snow Motion. Howdy folks, I'm Greg Elliott and welcome to Gadgets and Gear. When I first saw today's gadget, I knew it was a shoe-in to be featured on the show. So there's nothing like stepping into a pair of nice warm boots before heading out on the snow. Having stinky wet winter boots can make your life pretty miserable. And although boot dryers are nothing new, the new Turbo Dry from Dry Guy does things a little bit differently. So the Turbo Dry is a hybrid warmer and dryer. The fan brings air over the heating elements and then vents that warm air right into your shoe or boot. Stick these babies in your boots for a few hours after a day out on the hill, and the next day you'll be good to go. What's really great about the Turbo Dry is its size and its portability. It's really easy to throw into your suitcase without taking up a lot of room. And with the dual purpose power cord, you can use them at home and in your car. Plug it into your cigarette lighter as you're driving up to the mountains, and by the time you get up to the hill, you'll have a nice toasty pair of boots to put on. Now, they dried and warmed up my shoes pretty quickly, but obviously how long it takes will depend on how big your boots are and how wet they are. Now, they don't put out a lot of heat, and at first I wasn't really sure if they were working properly, but they are in fact designed to work with a subtle amount of heat so as not to damage your footwear. If you're looking for a set of portable boot warmers, the Turbo Dry is a really good option. It retails for about 40 bucks, and you can find it online at dryguy.com. That's it for this segment of Gadgets and Gear. I'm Greg Elliott, and stay dry. You can always stay connected to Snow Motion. Go to snow-motion.com. What we've done at Surefoot is really change the way that you get ski boots. The sun shines bright. This boot is made for your foot. As the difference is amazing. You'll the ski light. better. They're better fitting, better skiing than anything you've ever experienced. Squaw Valley and Alpine Meadows have combined to offer 6,000 acres, 43 lifts and 10 terrain parks in one amazing winter setting. Stay in the village at Squaw Valley just steps from the lifts and enjoy all that the North Lake Tahoe region has to offer. Squaw Valley and Alpine Meadows, plan your extraordinary winter adventure. I'm here with Brett Anderson, the man who solved global warming. Brett, can you tell us how you did it? Well, I was sitting with Taylor one day and I said, you know, I bet this puppy's got enough love to power the entire world. And that's when it hit me. Use the endless love of puppies as renewable energy. Amazing. How does it work? <laughs> Puppy love can't save the planet. You can. When you support 1% companies, you support the planet. Snow Motion is brought to you by 
GoPro, the world's most versatile camera. Wear it, mount it, love it. And by Vogner, the luxury of sport. I love this tip. It's the most effective tip I've ever told anybody. We all used to ski on long straight skis. Now with the shorter parabolic skis, our technique has to change a little bit. Before, we used to have our skis split front and back a lot. What would happen is the back knee would go in. This is a really weak position with the knee just bent in. Now with the parabolic, you want to pull that inside foot back and roll both edges over. So when you roll both edges over, a lot of power will go to that downhill ski. The wider tip of the uphill ski engages into the snow which initiates the turn too. So it's really beneficial to just pull that inside foot back. When I pull that uphill ski back, that brings my hips over the balls of my feet, keeping me in the athletic position. So when I'm skiing, I just pull this inside foot back. It's a funny feeling, but you get used to it. You pull it back, the power goes to the downhill edge, and you create a good ankle flexion to stay forward, and athletic. Earlier in the show, you got to look at what the team at Warren Miller Entertainment does. They make insane ski films. If you liked what you saw before, here's a little more. I couldn't say how much I was impressed with the way he skied in the backcountry. It was pretty cool to get up there and watch him absolutely dominate the mountain. Up ski racing and racing the downhill circuit. I'm always looking at terrain and ways to milk some more speed out of it. It's a little intimidating dropping into a line and you know you have a World Cup skier right behind you. Uh, you just have to make sure you go fast and uh, no falling. It's all about the feeling and having fun with it. And I like getting loose a little bit, you know, out of control, a little wild. It was just a, a clinic. It was humbling to put on a show. Johnny fired me up so much, he gets on the radio and says, like, yeah, Tom, what do you think I should do? Hit this line to skiers right at Darren's or take a backflip off the top over here. Growing up skiing around here, really significant to me just because it's always been a part of my youth. And skiing moguls, you know, that's my game. Tahoe is really a mecca for skiing. Everybody's out here having a fun time and it's a good vibe. Everybody kind of has the same attitude. Everybody lives here for the same reason. We all love to be outdoors. I just find that the beauty of the lake just gives you that sense that, wow, life is good. Kerr is known for his skier cross racing. I'm known for moguls. Jamie's known for her big mountain skiing. I'm also known for, well, moguls. JT Holmes is infamous for his base jumps. And I am still known for moguls. But when it gets like this, nobody knows any of us. Not because there are no friends on a powder day, like the saying goes, but because when it's deep, you really can't tell who anyone is. It's 
funny because, you know, you kind of are here a lot, but since we all have sort of diverging careers, you don't ski with each other a lot. So and skiing with different friends is the thing that, that keeps me so fired up about the place. Thanks for watching Snow Motion. We had a great show this week, and I hope it inspired you to get out on the slopes. I'm Brenda Viglione, and we'll see you next time. Coconut tree, if it's time for one of nature's treats, would it be easy?